Should old franchises be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all these games just be forgot and old lang syne? From Age of Empires to Psychonaut sequels that were almost not to guaranteed heavy-handed cash grabs like Resident Evil 8. Silent Hill lives on as tormented souls and classic PS1 horror now lives on through the creations of brand new indie games. Oh my goodness, that year went by so fast that I had time to finish like three whole games. Three whole games. That's all the time I had because I was way too busy running the Radio Tower of Power. WASDFM music show, which is going great by the way, and it's still streaming Monday nights on DLive. 8 p.m. Central. Check it out. And the replays are on for about three days straight, all the way up until about Thursday evening, I think. And then it gets uploaded to my backup channel, WASDFM Radio. Shameless plug. Anyway, now I didn't have enough time to finish 10 whole games to bring a top 10 list, because that is so overdone anyway, and honestly, who cares about other people's top 10s? Your top 10 is not valid unless it is the same as my top 10. Am I right? <laughs> Well, I didn't complete 10 games, no, and I really do mean that I completed only three games. Not approximately, exactly three whole games I completed that entire year. I really was a busy man. But I do have more than just three games to talk about. So, I'm gonna let voiceover Luke the Kook take over the rest of the video. You know what, I'm not gonna lie. I totally forgot Little Nightmares 2 was coming out in 2021. I mean, that is before 2021 happened. And what's there to say about Little Nightmares 2? Well, first of all, I have to confess that I have yet to play Little Nightmares 1 all the way through. So, I finished Little Nightmares 2 first. But from what I also hear, um, I believe I played it in the correct chronological order because I'm hearing theories that Little Nightmares 2 is actually a prequel to the first Little Nightmares that we received. And why is that, you ask? Well, you're just gonna have to look up other theory videos on uh, Little Nightmares 2 Explained, because I don't want to really get into spoilers and whatnot here. I do want to say I loved my journey both times in Little Nightmares 2. As frustrating as it was controlling Mono in certain situations, especially in my first playthrough, it was still a very enjoyable experience. I mean, it had me hooked. The teacher in that game was probably the creepiest for me. Not even the mannequins. Although the mannequins were pretty creepy, they also kind of felt like they were uh, ripped off a little bit from Silent Hill 2. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Borrowed from Silent Hill 2. The other bosses, like the Thin Man, or the Hat Man, or whatever you want to refer to him as, were effectively creepy as well. But, there's just something about that next stretching teacher, dude. You gotta watch out for her. Being able to team up with Six from the first Little Nightmares was an unexpected treat for me. Yes, and I know that Six is on the promotional material for this game, as well as the cover art and whatnot, but honestly, I managed to avoid all of that, and <laughs> didn't even realize that Little Nightmares 2 was coming out this year until they released the demo for it back in, what was it, January, February-ish? Yeah, really great game, not terribly difficult at all whatsoever, and a lot of enjoyment to be had. And watch out for that teacher, man. She really sticks her neck out for her students. Oh, can't touch this. Boom, 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 can't touch this. Nah, he's not important. Where are they all going? Bingo! Resident Evil Village is easily the game released in 2021 that I played the most in 2021. I got the most enjoyment out of it, the most time put into it. It was just a lot of fun all the way around. And yes, I know I have a lot of critiques about that game, but I gotta say, you know, this is the only AAA game that I have played all year. But I gave a lot of indie games a good chance this year as well. For as little time as I had for video games this year, I'm glad Resident Evil Village 
was my AAA experience. Gravity Runner. Now this isn't a game that I talked about a whole lot. In fact, I didn't talk about this game at all on my channel. On my Twitter though I have because I follow the developers for Gravity Runner. Oh man do I love this game. It's addictive, it's challenging, the music is great, the graphics are beautiful, and I mean the art style is absolutely gorgeous, and it just feels like an old school arcade game. It's primarily one objective, you run from point A to point B, but the obstacles you gotta go through to get there make it a lot more challenging than what it sounds. Gravity Runner, go check it out on Steam. Valheim. I heard and saw everybody play Valheim at the beginning of 2021, and I didn't get around to playing it until toward the end of 2021. But I gotta tell you, I enjoyed my experience with it, very, very limited experience with it. I didn't play a whole lot, and I didn't get nearly as deep into it as a lot of other people, and I have yet to try the online multiplayer. And uh, the reason for that is, it's not that I don't quite understand how to play Valheim, I can figure it out, it's just, well, I need a beefier computer to play a game like Valheim. The game is pretty sexy, and it very well could be the next Minecraft, it's got a lot of potential. It's still in early access, but I imagine a full release of this game will give it a good revival. If you haven't already, and I don't know who hasn't by now, go ahead and check out Valheim on Steam. Speed Limit! Oh my goodness, Speed Limit! This was an unexpected surprise of 2021. So as hard as this game is, because it's meant to be hard, that's kind of its shtick, it's, uh, it's a bit like Hotline Miami. You die and you start over again. Sometimes you start a little further back over than what you really want, but that's all part of the challenge. What is Speed Limit? Well, I'm sure a lot of people haven't heard of Speed Limit. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot of YouTube videos on it. It's essentially a run and gun game. The game starts off with you picking up a gun from some dude that allegedly died right in front of you, and then you just run, and you shoot everything and everyone that is trying to kill you. That's basically the entire story right there. You're running for your life. Uh, excuse me, you're running and gunning for your life. Bum Simulator. Now, this game looks kinda ass. It does. It really does. I'm not gonna lie. It does not look pretty at all whatsoever. It's a very ugly looking game. Having said that, does it always matter how good the game looks if you can still get a lot of fun out of it? And you really can. When was the last time we got a proper postal game? It's been a while. Bum Simulator will scratch that itch, no problem. Go ahead, check out Bum Simulator. I am bummed out that I didn't get a chance or any time to play more of it this year. But I imagine I'll make some more time for it in 2022. Now I have to mention the Lunar Effect demo. It didn't get a full release this year, but the demo is still available on Steam. Please check it out, especially if you're a fan of old school Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and Alone in the Dark. The difference between those games and this game is that the Lunar Effect is much more approachable. Trust me. I know, everybody has an issue with the tank controls from those old games that I mentioned, the old survival horror games. You will not be experiencing any of that in the Lunar Effect. The Lunar Effect has fluid control, and it's mostly puzzle heavy and a lot of atmosphere building. So far in the demo, there hasn't been any jump scares, in my opinion. I was just so invested in the gameplay and just so in love with the visuals and the sound and the ambient music. Mmm. Ah. Uh, what was I saying again? Oh, who cares? Go check out the Lunar Effect demo. You'll be happy that you did. Oh, man, these are the games that I didn't get a chance to play in 2021. And I guess I'll have to make room for them in 2022. Age of Empires 4. Look, I just didn't have any time. I'm a huge Age of Empires 2 fan. I played a little bit of the first Age of Empires. But I played a lot of the second Age of Empires, and none of the third. I don't know if the third interests me all that much, but the fourth interests me greatly. It came a little late in the year, it came in September when I was already working on my Halloween videos, my Thanksgiving videos. 
and trying to plan some kind of Christmas content. It's very much within my budget. I could easily buy it, but I didn't want to buy it yet because, you know, I don't want to buy it if I don't have time to play it. What can I say? Even though I buy plenty of games and take forever to get around to playing them, but whatever. Age of Empires 4 is a very, very special case. That game I will easily get invested in. It's the same thing with Civilization 5, same thing with Age of Empires 2. Age of Empires 4 is definitely gonna be a time sink for me. I'm gonna wanna wake up on a Saturday morning, start playing it, and before I know it, it'll be 2 a.m. following Sunday morning. I just want to allow myself to get lost in it. And since winter is here, Age of Empires 4 is going to be my hibernation game. Tormented Souls. Okay, so I played a little bit of the demo of the game. I am very interested. It's a lot like the Lunar Effect, except imagine if the Lunar Effect had PlayStation 2 quality graphics and borrowed a little bit more from Silent Hill 3. Well, that's pretty much Tormented Souls right there. Tormented Souls is a lot more similar to Silent Hill 3, but with its own mythos. Now, I mentioned earlier that I don't have the beefiest PC, and it's true. I don't, but Tormented Souls plays fine. It plays very well on my PC. It just doesn't stream very well on my PC. My PC just plain isn't sexy enough. I, it can play Tormented Souls if that's all it's doing, but if it's streaming Tormented Souls, it, uh, it just doesn't look very good. And it's a game that I truly want to stream. So, once I upgrade my PC or get a new one altogether, build myself a new one, Tormented Souls livestream will be coming. Hellish Court, it's the same reason as Tormented Souls. It plays fine on my PC. I don't have any problems with the frame rate until I start streaming it. And then it just looks like it's moving in slow motion. And it's a game that I really wanted to live stream. However, I didn't buy the full game yet. Like Valheim, Hellish Court is an early access. And I know early access games aren't for everyone, and that's totally fine. But you know what? I'm still interested in picking up Hellish Court at some point in 2022, and that can be another time sink game. And I can just see myself getting slaughtered over and over and over again on online multiplayer because I'm sure I go up against actual people I'm really gonna suck and it's gonna be a lot of fun Kingdom of Arcadia another surprise look this game doesn't look like much that's true if you're only into AAA games and you don't want to give these smaller indie games a chance because you're a snob of some kind that's fine that's your prerogative but if you want a challenge, regardless of what kind of game it is, then you're gonna love Kingdom of Arcadia. And I know you get through the first three levels, you're not gonna be feeling much of a challenge at all, but once you get into the second world, then it really ramps up with the winter levels and the ice levels and so on and so forth. Yeah, it gets kinda hard for my noob ass. Even harder than Speed Limit. I thought Speed Limit was easier. Well. Speed limit, in comparison to Kingdom of Arcadia, has a better checkpoint system. <laughs> and also keep in mind, I'm terrible at platformers. I didn't beat too many NES games when I was a kid, or as an adult. And Kingdom of Arcadia does kind of feel like that old school NES, Super Nintendo even, play style. It's all about the timing for Kingdom of Arcadia, and I just gotta get that right. I'll give Kingdom of Arcadia more time in 2022, because honestly, I'm probably not gonna play a whole lot of the new games from 2022. Now the thing is, everything's going on PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X now, and I most likely won't be picking up a PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X in 2022. But that probably won't happen for me until 2024 or 2026 or 2030, whenever they manage to release these in retail stores. But the thing is, I'm really in no hurry to pick up the next-gen consoles, or uh, I suppose you could say now current-gen consoles, because I have plenty in my backlog to catch up on. And I'm going to make 2022 the year that I catch up on my backlog. Also, the year that I play Elden Ring. That will happen, for sure. And I will let that be the only new game that I play in 2022. And that's all I have for now. Please stay tuned for more fresh and original content coming to this channel in the form of 
just really, really weird videos that you're probably not going to get right away if you think too hard about them. My name is Luke the Kook, and this is WASDFM, and I will see you next time. And again, Happy New Year! Bye.